What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about resisting the global reset. Now I've been doing a lot of talking about the global reset, which is a huge number of people who will shift down economically. Let's say right now you and your wife live in a house. You have two new cars with two car payments. In the future, you will be living in an apartment, driving used cars with no car payments. And that's best case scenario. What could happen is you can actually end up moving into a van or RV with your family. So what we're going to talk about today is resisting the global reset. Tips, strategies, and tactics that you can put into play to resist the global reset so you do not experience this financial downgrade in your life. So first thing we're going to talk about is living within your means. Now, let's say your name is John and your wife's name is Sally and together you make $60,000 a year, which after taxes is about 35, 3,600 bucks take home per month. Now, if you're living at that 3,500, like using every dollar that you get in to live, you are in trouble. Why? Because you have no surplus. You have no excess funds to stash away in case things get funky. So I'm going to give you some guidelines. So let's say your take home pay is 3,500. You should be living on 2000. I know that sounds crazy. We live in America, the best, the biggest, that's got to go out the window for now. I feel that the next five years are going to be extremely harsh for people who get globally reset. Today, I had to go get one of my rental cars from someone. Let me go ahead and describe this poor woman situation. It's really, really bad. So I go to the bad part of town and I roll up to her house. And what do I see when I roll up to her house? trash from probably three or four weeks in her front yard, which tells me that she's not paying her trash collection bill. I try to call her. Her cell phone has this message. We're sorry. The person that you're trying to contact can't answer the phone. Click. So her phone's off. She's not paying her trash. Her phone's off. She was renting the car to do Uber DoorDash and she got COVID. So she got sick. So she couldn't leave the house. So it's, it's a bad, 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 bad situation. And this woman is going to be globally reset. So what's going to happen if you're living at the top of your income using every dollar, if you have a setback, you have no bounce back ability because you're already using every dollar. So you have no reserve, you have no surplus, you have no additional funding to come in because all of your money is consumed. It's just consumed. As soon as it comes in, it's gone. And then you're out there doing whatever you do to earn money to replace that money for the next month's round of bills, which will be coming like clockwork. So you've got to get out of the habit a living to your maximum income. And once again, that is a habit that you must eradicate because right now you and your wife, you're living in a house, you have two car payments, you both have your jobs. Let's say something happens with your kids and you're already paying a lot of money in daycare. So you make the decision for your wife to stay home. And let's say after daycare, your wife's income provided an additional 1500, which is $18,000 a year, right? And that 18,000 goes away. At first you're good. You know why you're good? Because you're putting additional expenses on credit cards. And then one day you come home and you look at the bills and you see that all your credit cards are maxed out. You have reached your limit. You are in such a potential of being globally reset because let me go ahead and talk about 
the importance of living within your means. I'm going to say something a little dark. 2019, I had a heart attack and I did not work for six months. Didn't do anything for six months. I spent many weeks in the hospital and when I got out, I was a hot mess. I mean, I would get up and go to the bathroom and get dizzy. And I remember many times I would get out of the bed and I would start walking and I would get dizzy. I would fall to the floor, have to crawl to the bathroom, crawl up on the commode, do my business, then literally crawl back to the bed. And that, that went on for about three months. I was in no position to work, was in no position. My short-term memory was shot. I couldn't remember nothing. I couldn't remember my banking account. From, I, it, was, it was a mess. So for half a year, I didn't work. Now, what happened? Did I lose my cars? Nope. Did I lose my house? Nope. I'm telling you, and I'm using that morbid, dark example to tell you the importance of living within your means and having a surplus because for me, and we'll talk about this a little later in the, bill, in the video, I had a business that was bringing in cash even though I wasn't working. So I was able to easily pay my monthly obligations and actually have money left over and never actually touch my savings never touch my savings, but we'll get a bit that. So once again, just like this poor woman that was renting my car, who got COVID, who like, until she got COVID, she was paying her car rent on time. One little event wrecked her whole life. One. So if you are using all of your money to live, Please stop right now. Please stop. Once again, so rule number one, page one of the playbook is to live well within your income. Ideally, during these global reset period, if you could live on 50% of your income, that would be ideal because that would give you plenty of financial reserves in case something funky happens. Let's say you and your wife, let's say your, your name's Mike, your wife's name's Molly. You make 50,000, she makes 50,000 and you're living on 50% of your income. So you're living on 40,000 and you're just stashing her money, stashing her money. And then all of a sudden, Molly comes down sick and can't work. Okay, you've got plenty of cash on hand and I'm gonna talk about how much cash you should have based upon your income level. So you, this is something that unfortunately Molly got sick, but you can weather it because you're not using all of the cash that's coming in and you have surplus. All right, so let's talk about how much money you should have. If you're making 20 to $30,000 a year, you should have five to $10,000 cash somewhere, cash money. Not in a brokerage account, not in a mutual fund, not your 401k. This is above, above and beyond what you should have in investments. This is money that's sitting in a money market account or something like that, that you can get if you need it. Five to $10,000. Now, the more money that you make, the more money you need to have set aside because of lifestyle. So if you're making between let's say 50,000, you need to have $20,000 cash somewhere. And if you're making 100K, you need to have 25 to 35 cash somewhere because of your lifestyle and the bills and stuff that you accumulated, because you will need that much of a war chest. I'll tell you a story of uh, me being homeless. And when I actually, cause when you fall and when you have bad things happen, you want to blame everybody. And I went through a period of acute accountability and I started to see the reason I was homeless is cause I didn't have a savings account. I had no money. What I'm talking to you about surplus. I had no surplus, none. So I got me a second job and that second job money, I did not use for lifestyle. 
That second job money went straight into a savings account. And I had that job for one year. I was making about $400 a month working every other weekend. This went on and then I got laid off. But because I had 4,000, once again, I did not have 5,000, I didn't have 10,000, I didn't have 20,000, I had $4,000. That allowed me to weather that period of being unemployed for six weeks, pay my bills, eat and live. And when I got my another job, I still had money in the bank. $4,000. I'm not talking about 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, I'm talking $4,000 save my bacon. Just 4,000. So once again, if you're making 20, you need five to $10,000 somewhere. Because unless you get cancer or something like that, that money will stabilize you because we're gonna be talking about some other stuff that's gonna go on during the global reset. So, you know, I gave you some income ranges and how much cash, once again, cash, cash money that you should have. Now, we're gonna talk about something that's a little tricky. You're gonna to need to have good credit. Now, you wanna have the cash, but you wanna have access to credit because during the global reset, for people who are well qualified, who have a good credit history, who have a record of paying their bills on time, they'll still be able to get credit. They'll still be able to get credit. And I'm gonna talk about how do you get this credit. Uh, so if you're in a position where you have bad credit, you need to be working on that ASAP because this is what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna get a little um, futuristic. Your credit profile in the future is going to be a record of your character. There's talk about social media grades and stuff. This is coming. Remember the movie Minority Report where they had these predictors. If you would predict a crime and they would put you in jail before you predicted the crime, that's going to be a thing. And having bad credit is going to count heavily against you really heavily against you. Um, it, it's going to be a big, big barrier for getting ahead in society because they're going to start checking your credit. Like uh, I'll talk about this in the other channel, but I recently signed up for Instacart just to see what the process was. And they did a background check. They did a background check for Instacart and they, I don't, I did not get an alert. So they did not pull, any one of my credit reports, but they went into some data mining to check me out. So you're gonna wanna have the best credit that you can have, as well as cash. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you've got your cash over here, because as we go into, you know, page two of the global, resisting the global reset is having amazing, outstanding credit. I know that sounds crazy coming from me because I'm more of a cash and carry guy, but I'm talking about the future and what's going to be happening in the future. Because here's the thing. If you're dogged by bad credit, this is going to mess up your other credit portfolio. If you have bad credit and let's say you have four credit cards, that you've never were laid on, those four credit cards are in jeopardy of being closed because of the bad credit you have over here. So having bad credit in the future is gonna be one of the worst things you can do for your finances. I'm telling you, credit and credit scores are gonna be such a heavy factor in what you can and can do in life. Did you know that State Farm looks at your Equifax, TransUnion, whatever, they looked at my Equifax before they issued my car policies and my other policies. And you're gonna to get to the point where you're gonna be, that you got trash credit, you're gonna be denied for everything. You're gonna be denied for certain jobs, you're gonna be denied for certain uh, apartments, you're gonna be denied, you, you will not be able to rent an apartment going forward in the future. So the second 
play page of the global play resisting the global reset playbook is to have amazing outstanding credit if you got bad credit you need to start working on that asap because in addition to having the, the cash on hand you want to have credit and in the future i'm going to have a training in the course teaching you exactly what to do with that credit now page three of the resisting the global reset you need to increase your income during the global reset rent's going to go through the roof food prices are going to go up gas is going to go up this is not going to stop it's not so if you're if your uh, solution or your plan to ride out recession is to hope and pray I personally know people that because of the inflation of food prices, I know someone who now has to pay $980 a month more for the same things they were getting last year for less. There is no improvement of value of their life, but they got to pay almost a grand $12,000 per year more for the same stuff. And this is gas, food, and their, where they rent. These, those three things have moved the needle where they're having to pay $980 a month more for the same things they were getting last year for less. So page three of the Resisting the Global Reset playbook is to make more money. Now let's have this conversation. You do not have to be a Jeff Bezos to make more money. You don't have to be a Bill Gates to make more money. There are plenty of things you can do. You can do Instacart. Once again, plug for Instacart. I signed up for Instacart. You can do DoorDash. You can do Uber. You can, now, here's the thing. You don't have to do this full time. Like, once you get on top of your money, and that's gonna be page four, Page four, you want to be so on top of your money that someone can shake you in the middle of the night and he's like, I, I got this money and this that you would know. Because you're going to have to be into extreme money management. Because just like me having that heart attack, which I didn't see coming, I was working out, I thought I was eating right. Things happen. And if you're not prepared before they happen, Bad things are going to happen. I recently was at the doctor's office getting my checkup and I met a gentleman who had the same thing that I did. And we're in the waiting room and we're just talking and stuff. And he told me because he had the same heart attack that I did. It's called the widow maker, a complete occlusion. He lost his house. He lost his job. He lost his car. So he's dealing, like I told you, it's, it's horrible. The aftermath of an heart attack is horrible. So you're dealing with all of that and you also have all of these financial pressures. It's enough to give you a second heart attack, which he did have. He was so stressed out, he had a second heart attack. So you want to make more money. And when I say make more money, you don't have to do this full time. You don't have to kill yourself. Let's say you have a job, you're making $30,000 a year, and you go out and drive Uber every other weekend. You do Saturday and Sunday, eight hour shifts, and you make 400 bucks and add an additional $800 to your household budget. That can be significant. That can be huge because let's say you did what I did. You take that second job and you take all that money and you stash it away in your emergency fund. That can be huge because I'm here to tell you having money when you need it is an amazing thing. And not having money when you need it is hell. Like this poor woman that I had to go get my car back from, she has no money. She's sick. Her bills are going unpaid. Um, when she came to the door, 
I didn't see a light switch. I don't know if her lights were on. Her, I know her phone was off. I know her trash bill isn't paid. Maybe her utilities are off. And this creates a bad cycle. Because first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get depressed. So you don't have any money, you're not able to pay your bills, and now you're depressed. Now you have this mental fog. It gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. So it is very easy for you to fall into the global reset. So easy. Because of going back to page one of the playbook, you're living too high on the hog. You've got to stop that. You have got to stop that because that will kill you. Right now, I have like 40 credit cards. And I can tell you, I have three of them. They have a balance of 250 on one. I have a balance of 150 on another. I'm actually kind of playing around with it and using one to 2% utilization to see if my credit score goes up. That's all I'm doing. And then I've got some business credit cards. I've got a Divi credit card with nothing on it. I have a Topago credit card with nothing on it. I have two Wells Fargo credit cards. One is almost paid off. The other one has a, a balance of 5,000. That is all of my debt. And I'm, once again, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I am kind of scared. I am kind of scared because see, 2021 was just the beginning of the madness that we will see. Crime is going through the roof. I'm like other people are starting to comment. Crime is ridiculous. We're not where we're going to get with crime. You know, being rich and being in the alley with someone that wants to take you out, being rich ain't gonna help you. Now having a gun, that will help you, but being rich, no, no, no. If you look at what happened to Bolivia and Venezuela when their economies collapsed, the people who were rich, who lived in these beautiful houses, they were the first ones to go because they were easy targets. They were easy targets. So I got other videos that are coming up that I'll be talking about this. So I'm not gonna get into that right now because I'm gonna stick with the resisting the global reset playbook. I've given you four pages. Number one, live well within your means. Number two, have amazing credit. Number three, make more money. Number four, manage your money extremely well. And you want to have a surplus. Now, I didn't say you have to become a millionaire to, to make it through the global reset. You, you don't, you don't have to become a millionaire. You could be making $50,000, be living on 30, manage your money well, not have a bunch of bills, and you can ride this thing out. But if you continue to live on the maximum amount of money you make, I made a video and I appreciate the comments because a lot of people was like, be specific. When I say six figures is not enough, I know the numbers. 90% of the country doesn't make six figures. And I could have worded it a little better and said like, you know, 100K ain't enough. Now, if you're making 350K, yeah, you should be fine. But once again, I'm talking about a grassroots guerrilla approach to riding this thing out. Because if what I think happens, Joe Biden will be a one-term president. If the economy crashes the way that I predict, that I feel it's gonna happen in 2023, Joe Biden's gonna be a one-term president. We may have Trump again as president. Because when things get bad, people vote with what they appear that's gonna be in coming to help them in their best interest. People um, are going to demand change because like I said, 2021 is just a prelude of what's to come. One of the, you know, and this is a, from a privilege, like I don't go to the grocery store anymore. I use Instacart. And I've noticed that a lot of stuff is out of stock. 
stuff that, you know, like Nutter Butter cookies were out of stock. That's not something you would think would be out of stock. And I just kind of put stuff in the cart and I just noticed that a lot of things were out of stock. So these supply chain shortages that we're having are not going to go away in 2022. They're not going to go away. So this is going to create an environment with even more inflation. Like housing prices will slow down, but they're not going to crash in 2022. What we saw, what I do feel that will slow the housing cr prices down is if the Fed raises interest rates and every interest point that they go up, they knock so many people who can now either like right now, if you're just getting in by the skin of your chinny chin chin and they raise the rates, you're out the game. You can't afford a house. So that will slow the market down. If they raise the interest rates and there's talk that that may happen, that's going to slow the housing market down. It will not result in a crashing of housing prices because in my video, rent is going up. This ain't gonna stop. So during this global reset, you're gonna see a lot of people because today I was just went to Zillow and I am seeing houses in the hood for 35 and 4,500 bucks per month. Now I saw this one house. It was an older house with the one garage and it was not in the best neighborhood. And they were asking 3,500 bucks for this house. And I went and I saw it is across the board. These houses last year before the pandemic, would have been $2,000 houses, $1,500 per month houses. So you're going to see as we leave this phantom stimulus economy and move to the real economy, I don't think that those rental rates for those properties are going to hold. I feel that they're going to go down because the people who are, because 3,500 bucks per month is almost $40,000 a year rent. And we look at 80 million Americans only make $30,000 a year. So in 80 million Americans, this is half of the working population. So half of the working population, about 75% of the working population cannot afford that rent. Actually, let's go up You to the Fort rent of 3,500 bucks per month, you should be making hundred K. So 90% of the country cannot afford those rents. So when you have a situation where the marketplace cannot buy your product, you go out of business. And I, like I said, I don't see that these high rents are going to for certain properties, for certain properties, the high rents will work because they're in desirable areas. But no, it's kind of, it's, it's nuts right now. All landlords are trying to raise their rents to make up for the pain that they felt when there was a no eviction and a moratorium on mortgages. Everyone is trying to make up because a lot of people lost a lot of money, a lot of money. So in 2022, to prepare yourself for the global reset, you've got to really get out of debt. Uh, I should have made that page five. <clears throat> you should be working your situation out of debt because uh, when I had the Arctic, I had no debt, none. And that was one of the reasons there was more to that story. And I'll do a video about that in the future. But one of the things that you have to do is manage your money to your best ability and reduce your debt. Now, I know I mentioned having great credit and using credit, and I'll do a whole nother topic on that, but your credit is gonna be, is gonna matter way more than you think it does. It's gonna matter greatly, even if you have cash. Even if you have cash, good credit will be indispensable in the future. I want you to understand, and we're, we're about to take a little detour, but have you noticed the number of credit card companies that do soft pulls? Just Google, just scan YouTube. There's a ton of credit products. Like if you have an American Express credit card, the first one, they'll do a hard pull. 
Then if you apply for another one, you're already in the family, American Express family system, they do soft pulls. Wells Fargo does the same thing. Chase, I don't think so. I think Chase does hard pulls on everything. But the number of banking institutions that openly say, hey, uh, there are many brand new products. Uh, the Apple card, I think you can pre, you, you know, it's like you run a pre-qualified, it'll let you know if you got it before, you, you know, they do a hard pull on you. So the banking industry has really changed a lot. And this is why having good credit is gonna be so pivotal, so critical going forward in the future. Because it's not a license for you to go out and get a bunch of credit cards and ball out. Essentially, what you wanna do is have really good credit, get yourself 10 to 15 credit cards and barely use them. Barely use them. You just wanna have it just in case. You don't wanna be like, I use my credit cards like a debit card. I use it and I pay it off. Uh, the credit card I use the most, I literally pay it off five, six, seven times, you know, whatever my usage is per month. That's the type of stuff that you're gonna have to do to win to resist being globally reset because right now I'm about to send you a, a dark, dark message. If you are financially maxed out right now, meaning that every penny that you have coming in, you are in a global reset environment because if one thing happens, just one, and knocks you off your financial axis, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose the car, you may lose the house or the apartment, and you may have to become a homosexual. And here's the thing, once you fall, and as a person who used to be homeless, I can tell you, the climb back is hard. It is hard. So the trick is to never fall in the first place, because once you fall, it's going to take 10 times the effort to climb back than it will just to maintain. Because essentially, I feel this global reset environment is going to be going on for the next seven to 10 years. And we're going to see massive change. With that, we're going to see a lot of opportunity, but this message is for the average person living the average life and things that you can do to present yourself from being globally reset. Because I was stupid. Let me just say this. I was dumb. I thought that most people knew the stuff that I knew. Most folks don't. I'm a nerd. I study things that other people don't really even give an interest in it. Like I study income statistic tables of what happens to you if you lose your job. Do you know if you lose your job at 30 and you remain unemployed until 32, that two year period of being unemployed will impact your income for the next 10 to 20 years. So once again, the trick is to not fall because it's going to take so much effort just to get back to par. So this message is for the average person. Once again, you don't have to become a millionaire. You don't have to make $10,000 a month. You don't have to do that, but you have to be practical and you have to use your money judiciously and you have to make better financial decisions because like I said, I know all of the income statistics. I know where people line up and the average American is not going to become a millionaire. And if the average American starts a small business, and this is something that I'll be talking about in the, in the future. If you could start a small business that makes $1,200 to $1,500 a month net profit, that is life changing money. I know you're going like, well, no, no, wait a minute. That's not a lot of money. Properly used, that could be the money that can you could use to make you wealthy. That 12 to 1500 bucks over time with compounding. That can make you wealthy. It's a big thing. I know there are many people here on YouTube. There are many ads. It's like, hey, you can make 10, 15, 20,000. 
I call bull crap on that. I know what it takes to make money. I know how hard it is to make money. And essentially this, this video, this message is for the average person, things that you can do to resist being globally reset because like this woman, I already know what's going to happen to her. I already know what's going to happen to her and it's going to happen to millions, not a few hundred, not a few thousand millions of people are going to go through what this woman's going through right now because I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn, I had to fall and hit my head to learn these lessons that I'm giving to you. And since that time of me being in a boarding house, I have never been without a savings account. Never. I will die with money in a savings account. I know that, and I'll leave it to someone, leave it to a family member. But essentially, I am never gonna be caught without a savings account. I am never gonna be caught without some financial reserves. Because at any point, anything can happen, like a heart attack. I didn't see that coming. Just like you right now, you and your wife, you're living your lives, you're doing your things. Then John goes to the office and there's John's like, we want to see you in the conference room. You go in the conference room. There's some people you've never seen. This lady handing you a folder, telling you no longer have a job. And it's on and popping. See, when you're living at the edge of your financial limit, it doesn't take much to knock you off your axis. And so many people, because I, I haven't done the research, so I'm not going to spout these numbers, but I'm going to give you a highly educated opinion. I feel that during this pandemic, credit card debt has skyrocketed. I haven't done the research on it, but I guarantee you once I do, I will find out that credit card debt has skyrocketed and that is dangerous. That is dangerous. People are not using credit cards for fancy trips. They're using it for food. They're using credit cards for gas. They're using credit cards for medication. That's very, very bad. They're using this stuff for things that they absolutely need, but they don't have enough financial firepower in their budget to do them which means they're living on borrowed time and it's only a matter of time before those credit cards are maxed out. Then what they're gonna go to. I'm telling you, what we see, what is happening, what is happening in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 is literally going to change the face of America. And I'm giving you the playbook of the things you need to start working on. Like, because once again, after the horse have left the barn, it makes no sense to close the door. And one of the things that I consistently get with consult calls is people calling me after the horse has left the barn. And with my other channel, the corporate game, I'm going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. That's going to be a very, very different channel, very, very different channel. But guys, you need to deploy this playbook if you're in one of those 80 million people making $30,000 a year or less. And also to my people who are living with the parents, you should use this time to rack up and save as much money as you can. You, you should not be playing around. You're already living with the parents. If you're living with the parents, you should go out and get a second job and save every penny of that money because you are right now in a financial reprieve because your parents are helping you out. Make the best of this situation. Make the best of this situation because what I feel, tomorrow is, well, today is New Year's Eve and 2023 will be here just like that. And we will start to see more madness. We will start to see more supply chain um, shortages we will see more inflation we will see like right now i'm still waiting on two cars to be fixed because they don't have the parts they've been there three weeks so we're going to see a very 
broadening of pain, economic pain. And I don't want that to be you. So if you go ahead and deploy this playbook and start working on it now, you got a chance. And I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound a little dark, it's gonna sound a little morbid. For some of you, it's already too late. Some of you are in so deep that it's just gonna take one little hiccup in your financial life and there you go, because you're in so deep. I'm gonna work on solutions for you people because what you people, uh, what I call the desperate people are looking for is a quick come up, like a lottery type come up. And realistically, that ain't in the cards. It's just not in the cards. So I'm gonna work on some for you people, but for the folks who are doing well, there is no uh, boogeyman at the door right now. The time to take action is right now, <laughs> right now. I cannot implore you. I cannot scream. I cannot jump. The time to take action is right now, right now. Cause like, like that credit thing, and I'll do a separate video. I may do it, you know, on the, uh, on the Mac daddy network. I may do it on another channel, but this is what you need to do. And once again, this is for the average man. You don't have to become a millionaire. You don't have to, you know, I did this video. Six figures is not enough. And I, I will probably do an update video on that because I have a lot of questions and stuff and I will correct myself. But that's what you got to do to survive this. Because if you're a parent and you have children, do it. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your kids. Because the financial legacy that you create is what they will inherit. So let me know your thoughts and opinions where you are with this. I gave you the playbook and I give you the playbook because in my life, I've had some very hard economic times and that playbook has enabled me to survive. And it's also enabled me to thrive because like right now, you know, like I have no intentions of using my personal credit for much and nothing, but I have it. So I have that option and you want to have as many options on the table as you can in case something gets funky. You know, like when you have these options, it makes a big difference, it makes a huge difference. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.